Welcome back. Before we proceed further and, and get a little bit better understanding of why uh, maybe some of these investors were so keen on investing in mortgage-backed securities, essentially loaning uh, this money to all of these people who are buying these ever-appreciating houses, I think we need a, a few more tools in our tool belt. Uh, so I'm going to introduce you to the concept of the yield curve. You might have heard this before. You might have heard uh, people on CNBC talk about it. And hopefully, after about the next five or 10 minutes, you will know a lot about the yield curve. So when most people talk about the yield curve, they're talking about the treasury yield curve. And what, what, is, what, what does that mean? What is even a treasury? So these treasury securities, whether they're T-bills, treasury bills, treasury notes, or treasury bonds. So you know they all start with a treasury. So there's T-bills, T-notes, and T-bonds. All these are, are these are these are loans to the federal government and these are about these are considered risk free because if you lend to the federal government uh, and they're running short of cash all they have to do is increase taxes on us the people and they can pay back your debt so in dollar denominated terms the treasury bills notes and bonds are about as safe as you can get in terms of lending your money to to anyone so when most people talk about the yield curve they're talking about the risk free yield curve and they're talking about uh, the and they're talking about the curve for treasuries so first a little bit of a little bit of definitions what is the difference between treasury bills treasury notes and treasury bonds they're pretty much all loans to the government but they're loans for different amounts of time so if i loan if i give a loan to the government for a thousand dollars for any say i give a loan for six months that will be a treasury bill so i will give the government a thousand dollars the government will give me a treasury bill and that treasury bill from the government is essentially just an iou saying that i'm going to give you your money back in six months with interest Similarly, if it's three months, it's a three-month treasury bill. Treasury notes are loans that, that are from one year to 10 years. So on this graph that we're going to make using the actual, the actual yield curve rates from zero to one year, and actually there's no zero-year uh, treasury bill. It's actually the shortest one is one month. This would be something like here on our graph. So from one month to one year, these are T-bills. T bills, and this is just definitional. Then from one year to 10 year, these are notes. Actually, the, the one year, I believe the one year itself is a note. So just a, I think so, uh, up to one year is a bill, although I might be wrong on that. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's just a definitional thing. From one to 10 year, these are called notes. And then when you go beyond 10 years, these are called treasury bonds. These are just definitional things to, to worry about. So with that out of the way, let's talk about what the yield curve is. So when I, I'll just give you a simple thought experiment. If I'm lending money to someone for a month uh, versus lending money to that person for a year, in which situation am I probably taking on more risk? Well, sure, if I'm lending someone for a month, I know I'm going to, only so much can happen in that month. So I would expect, to be paid less interest, not just obviously uh, in dollar terms, but even on a you know adjusted for time, I would expect less interest for that month. So when when I talk and and this is actually an important point to make, when I say that I'm charging six percent interest for that month, that doesn't mean that after a month the person is going to pay me six percent on my money. It means that if I were to give that money to uh, somebody for a month, then they were to pay it back, and then I were to give that money to, say, that same person or another person for a month, and I were to keep doing that for a year, then in aggregate, I would get 6%. So that 6%, no matter what duration we talk about, whether one month, one year, five years, 15 years, when we talk about the interest rate, that's the rate that, on average, we would get for a year. It's the annualized interest rate. So going back to my question, if I lend someone money, even the government, for a month, there's usually less risk in that because only so much can happen in a month versus in a year. In a year, there might be more inflation. The dollar might collapse. I might be passing on uh, better investments. I might need the cash in a year's time while I, I have a lot of confidence that I don't need the cash in a month's time. So in general, you expect less interest when you loan money for a shorter period of time than a longer period of time. And so let's draw the yield curve and see if this holds true. So I actually went to the 
Treasury website. So that's trez.gov. And this is the yield curve. So they say on March 14th, so this is the most recent number, and I'm going to plot this. They say, if you lend money to the government for one month, you'll get 1.2% on that money. And, and remember, if it's $1,000, it's not like I'm going to get 1.2% on that $1,000 just after a month. If I kept doing it for a year, this is an annualized number, I'll get 1.2%. And so for three months, well, for three months, I get a little bit less. And then for six months, I get more. And then it does seem that the overall trend is that I expect more and more money as I lend money to the government for larger and larger periods of time. And this is a little interesting anomaly that the that you get a little bit more interest for one month than three months. And, and we'll do a more advanced presentation later as to why uh, you might get lower yields for longer duration investments. That's called an inverted yield curve. But let's just plot this and just see what it looks like. So you saw where I got my data. So they say for one month, I'd get 1.2%. So this is one month. It would be right about here. Three months, I get about the same thing. For six months, I get 1.32. Maybe that's like here. One year, I get 1.37. Maybe it's here. Five years, let's see, five years, I get 2.37. So that's maybe like here. 10 years. And these aren't all of the durations. I'm just, just for simplicity, not going to do all of them. For 10 years, 3.44. So maybe that's here. 3.44. 20 years, I get 4.3, like that. And then for 30 years, I get 4.35, like that. So the current yield curve looks something like this. And so you now hopefully you at least understand what the yield curve is. All it is is, you know, using a, a simple graph, someone can look at that graph and say, well, in general, what type of rates am I getting for lending government to at a risk free uh, on a risk free basis or as risk free as, as anything we can expect? What type of rates am I getting when I lend to the government for different periods of time? And that's what the yield curve tells us. And in general it's upwardly sloping. Because as I said, when you lend money for a longer period of time, you're, you're kind of taking on more risk. There's a lot more um, that you feel that could happen. You might need that cash. You might, you might uh, you know, there might be inflation. The dollar might devalue. There's a lot of things that, that could happen. So the next question is, well, what, what determines this yield curve? Well, when the Fed, uh, not the Fed, sorry, when the Treasury, the government, when the government needs to borrow money, what it does is say, well, hey, everyone, we need to borrow a billion dollars from you because we can't control our spending. And they say, we're, we're going to borrow a billion dollars in one month notes. So they're going to, this is one month notes. They're going to borrow a billion dollars. And they have an auction. And the world, investors from everywhere, they go in, they say, well, this is, you know, this is a safe place to put my cash for a month. And depending on the demand, that determines the rate. So if there are a lot of people, if there are a lot of people who want to buy those one month treasuries, the rate might be a little bit lower, right? Does that make sense to you? Think about it. If a lot of people want to buy it, there's a lot of demand relative to the supply, so the the government has to pay a lower interest rate on it. Similarly, if for whatever reason people don't want to keep their money in the dollar, they think, you know, the US might default on their debt one day and not that many people want to invest in the treasury. Then that auction, the, the, the government is going to have to pay a higher interest rate to people for them to loan money to it. So maybe then the auction ends up up here. And similarly, the government does auctions for all of the different durations. And duration, I just mean you know, the time period that you're getting the loan for. So they'll do it for one month, three months, six months, one year, two year, three year, etc. Once the government has done that auction, then it, th th those treasuries, so you know, you give the money to the government, they give you an IOU called a T-bill, then you could trade it with other people. And that's going to determine the rate in the short term. So the government does the auction, but then after the auction, say, you know, and, and a lot of people had demand, but then a lot of people get freaked out, and the, the, the public markets, when you try to sell that treasury, will then expect a higher yield. I know that might be a little complicated now, and I, and I always start to jumble things when I run out of time. But hopefully at this point, you have a sense of what the yield curve is. You have a sense of what treasury bills, treasury notes, and treasury bonds are. And, and you have some intuition on why the yield curve has this shape. See you in the next video.